Now, those who have power, those who have money, and those who are di driven by greed and injustice are now seeking to grab the lands of the poor. It's happening on a very large scale in Africa. It's happening in India. The World Bank is promoting it because there's this very false idea that large-scale farms will help us with food security when all the data is showing smaller farms produce more food. So if you have to be food secure, you'd better be small. Diversified farms can deal with climate change much better because one crop doesn't do well, some other crop will do fine. And the monoculture of large farms will be more vulnerable to climate collapse. And of course, the biggest issue is half the world farms. You can't rob them of their livelihoods. You're going to have, you already are having in India, as a result of the land grab, in this case more for mining and industry, what we are seeing is a war within. An Operation Green Hunt has been launched by the government in order to clean out the lands, to be able to grab the lands on behalf of corporations. We talked about the Kashmir crisis in the shootouts, but those scenes are taking place in every remote tribal area today. And that issue of war for resources, that as long as you are powerful, you have the right to grab anyone's resources and you have a right to use all kinds of illegitimate violence. That militarized mindset that I say comes from capitalist patriarchy is really at the root of so many of our problems, which is why we need to feel at home with nature and we need to recognize that the resources of the earth belong to all have to be shared and the land rights of the poor defenseless indigenous person and the peasant is the biggest peace in initiative of today and it's the biggest climate insurance of today. Gwyn Dyer, uh, define and defend geoengineering and tell us which governments are engaging in it. Well, first of all, Vandana and I agree about 95 percent. We agree about the problem, that there we, is yeah. a problem. Yeah, we agree about the problem, and um, I don't disagree with any of her solutions, but I don't think they're going to happen in time if we do not intervene directly as well to avoid a massive human dieback in population. We are heading for the brink very fast. But your solutions commit the planet to a massive dieback. I don't, I don't agree with you. What, what, holding the temperature down is an intervention. It's an intervention that's intended to be temporary. It wins you time to get your emissions down. The goal is still to get the emissions out. And many other goals that you and I would agree upon are attainable, but only with time. And we don't have the time. We are going to be, the last report out of the Hadley Center suggested on current track, we are four degrees Celsius hotter, average global temperature by 2060. It's only 50 yeah, years. But Gwen, every one of your solutions is further disrupting the web of life, which is the problem. The problem is not warming and cooling. We can survive. The planet can survive that. Oh, of course it can, yeah. but, but not, problem, not all of us. Not all of us. But the problem is the every, geoengineering is an experiment. It is not a solution. No. And you cannot experiment in such a violent way without full assessment of the impact. And as I said, just the simple thing of blocking the sun rays it's a problem for the planet. It's a problem you're for talking, humanity. You're talking 1%. I mean, you're talking about 1% no, of solar radiation. No, but the iron filings, iron filings being like thrown iron. into the ocean. That's ridiculous. Or re reflectors in the sky or artificial volcanoes. But that's geoengineering. Every they, one of them, if, if the solution is looked at all its spin-offs in a full ecological way and a full social impact, or what does it mean? And the most okay. important thing is it's undemocratic. I think the crisis of the climate is so serious that people need to be involved. The problem of geoengineering or genetic engineering is a bunch of experts sitting with a bunch of corporations say, we'll decide on behalf of the no, people. No, no. That's part of the problem. Yeah. And that's why I really respect Eva Morales. Well, he I'm called the people of the world after the collapse of Copenhagen. And so the people of the world will decide the solution. Okay, the people of the world will not decide. You know that and I know that. This but is they not, are deciding. I haven't noticed yet. Well, there's a, a universal declaration on the rights of Mother Earth the, that came the, out of that amazing gathering that yeah. we need to shift to an Earth centered paradigm rather I'd than an arrogant this. narrow reductionist mechanistic science you know expert based paradigm. Do you know what will happen? I just want to interrupt yeah. for a second to say, Gwyn Dyer, if you can explain, I don't even think pe most people understand what geoengineering okay. is. Geoengineering is short-term interventions to avoid a climate runaway disaster in order to give us more time to get our emissions down 
which in themselves will cause a runaway climate disaster if we uh, simply allow them to go ahead. Without geoengineering, you hit that disaster in less than 50 years. Um, and you probably need more than 50 years to get your emissions down. Now, first of all, obviously, you've got to do the experiments. You've got to figure out, are there horrendous side effects you don't want to do? Um, but if you don't do this, you know who dies first? It's the people in the tropics and the subtropics. Not up here. We watch you die on television. Can I ask you, in terms of uh, geoengineering, what uh, companies or what uh, governments are now promoting this as a, as a potential solution? We still don't have any official government co uh, commitment to it anywhere. What and companies are investing in uh, it and developing it? Companies are investing in a couple of marginal things that, frankly, I don't believe have any credibility. Vandana mentioned iron filings chucked into the sea. Well, I don't think that's what actually... That do? Well, the idea was you cause blooms of algae, which will then die, and as they dry, their bodies drop to the seabed, embed carbon, di carbon in the seabed and take it out and of the volcanoes? atmosphere. And volcanoes? What are they? Oh, uh, well, the volcanoes, the idea is big volcanoes, when they explode, um, put car sulfur dioxide, large amounts of it, into the stratosphere, where it stays for a couple of years, because it doesn't rain up there, the, the particles stay, and they reflect enough sunlight to lower the temperature at the earth. And seeding the clouds? Seeding the clouds is make them more reflective. Spray up some seawater into low-lying clouds, and they'll reflect a little bit more incoming sunlight than they did before. And what else? And lower the, the temperature. The, the, other, the other proposals I mentioned, the, you know, paint the house roofs green, or white, but I think that's probably a one-time solution. Um, there are and other I wouldn't object to yeah. that. No, I wouldn't object. What color you paint, it doesn't really yeah. matter. <laughs> yeah. um, there's a, a new one that's come up recently, a fellow at Harvard um, suggested that you could actually uh, begin with rivers and reservoirs, but put rather micro, microscopic scale bubbles into the water which would whiten it. In other words, um, you know, it would reflect more sunlight than, than normal dark water does without actually changing the quality of the water. And as Juan asked the corporations involved? In none of these cases so far are there corporations involved. This is coming out of the scientific community. Um, they're looking for the links with the, the, both the Pentagon, I think, and the scientific community, uh, and, and, and with corporate funding. But the, the initiatives are coming out of the scientific community. scientific community is scared and desperate. I mean, there's an undercurrent of panic in most of the, in the interviews that I held. Well, Van Dannen's argument that there's just not enough time to talk about the people-oriented solutions you're talking about. Well, the first thing is there's never enough time, but you have to find the solutions and to use the excuse of immediacy and urgency to take the wrong action is not a solution. Uh, in terms of time, we do organic farming, and again in my book, Soil Not Oil, we've shown that a localized ecolo ecological biodiverse system of farming could solve 40% of the climate problem because 40% emissions are coming from food miles, nitrogen oxide emissions, uh, cutting down the Amazon forest, all linked to a globalized industrialized food system. Tomorrow we can do that. In three years' time, all of the world's farming could be ecological, absorbing the carbon dioxide, and putting fertility back in the soil. It's not a 50-year experiment. It's a assured, guaranteed uh, path that has been shown to work. And it does three things for you. It reduces emissions while increasing food security and food productivity, and increasing water security, because soils rich in carbon and organic matter are the best reservoir You're of water. But I want to just mention, Actually, there's, just as there are a group of scientists who are panicking because of their reductionist approach, I'm a scientist. The reason I do ecology today is because I realized science was just shrinking in terms of the knowledge an individual gets in a particular stream. And so many of the narrow expertise is where you're getting this panic because they don't know there are other solutions. I'd love to take some of your gen gen geoengineering friends from the scientific community to our farm to show here's a solution that works in the short run, in the immediate run. But there. I want to mention this. Yes. There's okay. a movement against geoengineering called HOME, Hands Off Mother Earth. Citizens telling irresponsible scientists, arrogant in their power, Hands Off Mother Earth. If you were the dictator of the we world and seconds. could change land ownership patterns in the United States like that, you could have it all done in three years. It'll you happen. can't do that. No, it not will happen. Not in three years, not the in 30. The young people will. They're ready to make change. We will leave it there. Vandana Shiva.